It seems there's never enough sickness to go around the world. Aside from the COVID-19 pandemic, some other countries are in danger of the spread of foot and mouth disease. But what is this sickness and is this something we should all be worried about? For today's video, we'll be sharing with you what we know about foot and mouth disease and if it's something to panic over. Only here in today's video, so keep on watching for more. Is there an outbreak of foot and mouth disease? A significant foot and mouth disease outbreak in Indonesia has alerted the veterinary profession world worldwide to the possibility of a cross-border spread that might result in widespread animal slaughter and ruin national livestock economies. Before a case of foot and mouth disease was found there in late April, Indonesia had been thought to be free of FMD since 1986. According to official government estimates from Indonesia, the illness has subsequently spread quickly throughout the archipelagic Southeast Asian country, afflicting 472,667 animals across 20 24 provinces, though the true number of cases is probably far higher. Although there is a small chance that the disease may spread to other areas, Australia's close neighbor has increased biosecurity procedures, including placing detector dogs at airports to smell out meat and other animal products. In the meantime, the Australian Veterinary Association is discussing with authorities how private practice veterinarians, particularly those who treat companion animals, can help with containment efforts should a significant an outbreak develop in Australia. Foreign veterinarians would probably be invited to assist as well. What is foot and mouth disease? Is this something I should be worried about? A viral infection is the root of foot and mouth disease. It is widespread throughout Southeast Asia, most recently in Indonesia, where it recently migrated to Bali in the east. The South Pacific, Australia, and Papua New Guinea have never experienced FMD. The environmental tolerance of the FMD virus is what makes it so amazing. It can linger on a variety of inanimate objects, including livestock equipment, clothing, shoes, car tires, and equipment used to transport livestock. Additionally, FMD can linger in animal feed and livestock byproducts like meat and skins. Even those who come into contact with infected livestock may still have the virus on their hands and within their noses. This implies that anything connected to contaminated livestock could become polluted. The good news is that FMD is not a contagious illness that easily spreads to people, and meat and milk from sick animals are safe to ingest. So how does FMD affect animals? Cloven-hoofed animals, including cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and deer, are affected by FMD. One of the most contagious diseases is FMD. In some cases, it is at least as contagious as the COVID-19 Omicron version. Blisters are the distinctive symptom in animals with FMD. These are visible in the mouths and hooves of infected animals, particularly in the soft tissue directly above the foot and in the space between the two toes that make up the hoof. Ulcers are created when these blisters rupture. Animals with FMD lesions stop moving, stop eating, and drool because they are so painful. With different FMD virus strains and different species, the severity of symptoms varies. The fact that nearly every animal in an infected herd or flock contracts the disease and becomes ill, but that few of them will normally perish from it, is another unique trait. It is a disease with a significant economic effect and substantial morbidity, but low fatality. There's no denying that FMD is spreading fast, especially in Indonesia. But what makes this disease so hard to control? FMD is globally contagious and much feared to the point that the international trade in animals is cut off from the infected nations. There are numerous FMD viral varieties. This is significant because immunizing sensitive animals is one way to stop negative effects on the economy and animal welfare. The vaccine, however, must closely resemble the strain that is causing FMD in a particular region. Additionally, the protection period is typically brief, lasting perhaps a year or less. It can be difficult to keep herd immunity and vaccination rates high in cattle populations, particularly in poorer nations. It requires a sophisticated infrastructure for vaccine production and delivery, as well as a sophisticated system for identifying cattle. In addition to that, several factors contribute to why this disease is hard to control, such as the host range. In Australia, the FMD virus might also infect wild deer, feral pigs, and feral goats in addition to controlled cattle. Controlling the spread of disease becomes significantly more challenging once the pathogen reaches these uncontrolled communities. For instance, despite the significant harm that feral pigs cause to our environments, such as the degradation of our waterways and the threat to native species, we haven't been able to control them. Should an incursion 
explosion take place, it may imply that we will never be able to eradicate FMD if Australia's feral population contracts the disease. So how are neighboring countries dealing with the possibility of FMD within their lands? The aim of a response to an FMD incursion in a developed nation like Australia is eradication. According to the disease's economic effects, eradicating the sickness will be less expensive in the long term than continuing to have it. A good example of how one country handled this sickness is the UK's management of FMD back in 2001. The best illustration of such a response would be the 2001 UK FMD outbreak. Unknown how it entered, however, one idea holds that it did so by Northumberland pigs being fed illegally imported sick meat. Detection took some time. The illness had already spread significantly by the time the issue was discovered by the authorities. To respond, it was necessary to identify all cattle on affected premises, as well as those that were likely to become sick due to prospective virus contact. More than 6.5 million animals died as a result, and it cost the UK's agriculture and tourism industries £8 billion. Images of soldiers excavating mass graves and apocalyptic bonfires full of smoldering corpses were shown in the media report. Of course, it's important to remember that one country's prevention of FMDs spreading isn't a guarantee that they're safe from it altogether. Its neighboring countries, as well as its trade partners, should be able to end it as well. Even if a nation proves that elimination is effective, it won't be able to trade for several months until its trading partners react. This is why it's crucial to stop any incursion as soon as possible. The equine influenza outbreak, often known as horse flu, that occurred in New South Wales and Queensland in 2007 is the most comparable example of an FMD reaction that we are aware of. Even if the reaction to equine influenza does not include culling, the same disruptive effects on communities would result from the repetition of the bans on horse movements and equine events, the mobilization of a sizable veterinary workforce, and the establishment of disease zones. Due to FMD's high profile and significant impact, Australia's federal, state, and territorial governments have prepared response strategies and have wargamed FMD scenarios over a long period. More recently, incursions of other animal pests and diseases like the varroa mite in honeybees and Japanese encephalitis in pig herds have tested Australia's reaction mechanisms for an FMD incursion. However, given that so much depends on it, the nation shouldn't undervalue the expense and difficulty of combating this disease, which has only recently arrived on their shores. So far, Indonesia is doing its best to contain FMD and in recent news, it even added the popular tourist spot Bali as part of their priority list. To stop the spread of foot and mouth disease, FMD, Indonesia will make Bali one of its priority zones for a vaccine campaign, a government official announced on August 11th. After infections were discovered in Bali, nations that produce cattle like Australia and New Zealand increased their vigilance against the disease. Indonesia is working to contain an FMD outbreak before the end of the year. At a briefing, Wiku Adisasmito, the task force's spokesperson, stated the following, Bali is being prioritized for vaccination because of the high human traffic, both domestic and international. They could be a factor spreading the disease. One of the largest foreign nationalities visiting Bali is Australia. Although FMD does not affect humans, it is very contagious and results in lesions and lameness in cattle, sheep, goats, and other animals with cloven hooves. According to government statistics, over 479,000 FMD cases were still active nationwide as of Thursday, with Bali reporting more than 500 sick animals as of August 11th. Indonesia had vaccinated 1.33 million animals as of Thursday and has plans to acquire more than 28 million vaccine doses by the end of the year, according to government data. So far, 116,000 animals have been immunized in Bali. East Java and West Nusa Tenggara, which are known for their cattle farming, are two additional priority areas for FMD vaccination, according to Wiku, who also urged local government officials to tighten animal traffic control between provinces to stop the virus from spreading further across the nation. Just when we're slowly recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic, FMD is raising another health concern for many countries. For now, it's best to keep sanitizing anything and everything and make sure to wash your hands regularly. With that, we're ending today's video on what you need to know about foot and mouth disease. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these.
and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.